Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Jared Polly's Fragrance Reviews. Tonight, I'm going to be reviewing a fragrance from the house of Givenchy. This is a Givenchy Gentleman Only Absolute, which came out in 2016. This is an EDP Eau de Parfum Concentration, and this scent is classified as a woody, spicy fragrance. But before I get too much more into tonight's review, I would like to make a mention of a fellow YouTube reviewer and a very good buddy of mine, Vic from Bel Air Scents. Now to me, Vic is the finest reviewer of vintage men's fragrances and fragrances that are hard to find or under the radar. Vic is an encyclopedia of knowledge. He has always been so gracious with his time to answer my questions. He has my, uh, been my biggest supporter since I started my channel. And I'm sure if you go to his YouTube channel at Bel Air Sense, you will not be disappointed. In particular, his last review, his most recent review on Jean Patou Lacoste 1967 was an education. It was an instructive history, not only on the fragrance, but the houses of Jean Patou and Lacoste. So if you're looking to really increase your knowledge and your and increase your passion of men's fragrances, especially vintage fragrances, go to Vic's YouTube channel at Bel Air Scents. You will not be disappointed. Thanks for everything, Vic. You're a great guy. I really appreciate all your time and energy and knowledge. So we're going to get back to this fragrance right now. And this fragrance is fairly linear. It's somewhat uh, simple, but it does the job if you're looking for uh, a date night fragrance or something that is fairly non-offensive. I know several people that consider this particular uh, Givenchy fragrance in the gentleman line, which has many fragrances, to be the finest. And most of the, the scents from the Givenchy gentleman line have iris as the main note. This does not. So it deviates from the norm. I consider this very modern. It is refined. It's warm. It's sensual, but still masculine. And it's a very beautiful blend. So I'm going to take this out of the box and I'm going to give it a spray on my wrist. This, in fact, may be the heaviest bottle I have in my in my collection. It's got to be over a pound. It's like a, it's like a weapon. So quick spray in the back of my wrist. A lot of people say they get a, uh, a lot of citrus in the initial blast. I don't get much. I get immediate spice, cinnamon, and the sweet nutmeg, which is incredibly inviting. As it dries down, it retains most of the initial DNA profile but it starts to become a little more vanilla-like. And, and at this point, I was thinking, well, is it going to become extremely sweet and obnoxious? But it didn't. It was just right on the fence, right on the border of it being uh, sweet, but not too sweet. Later on, several hours later, it starts to lose some of its power and pulls closer to the skin. And it ends off being a warm, spicy, sweet, somewhat creamy and woody scent that is very appealing, not only uh, to me, but I would say to most people. Uh, the notes on this fragrance, there's not many. The top note is bergamot, the mid notes are cinnamon, nutmeg, and saffron, and the base notes are vanilla and sandalwood. Two notes I want to just briefly mention. Sandalwood is a part of the wood moss fam family. It is a historic note, which is woody, milky, creamy, rich and soft, and the finest sandalwood in historically is from India, and it's a type of sandalwood called Mysore. But this is becoming harder and harder to find, and it is not being used that much in perfumery. And for many scents, an inferior inferior types of sandalwood are being used, which are much harsher and more pungent. So this is one thing about older vintage fragrances. They were in fact finer ingredients used in many of them and the fragrances were more ready, ready available but that's not the case today and most um, fragrances are substituting synthetic notes for natural notes. So the other scent I want to talk about or the note is saffron. Saffron is a spice and saffron is in fact a small flower that is part of the iris family. It is soft, delicate, leathery, 
bittersweet and soil-like, and it is known for bringing refinement and sophistication to men's and women's fragrances. Final thoughts on this. This has decent performance, maybe five hours. It has very good projection and set walls for the first few hours, but you're going to have to reapply this possibly twice to get through a nine, ten hour day. This is about, is about as sweet as I would go in a gourmand. I would not like anything more because then I think it would be overbearing and it would be just simply too much for my senses. Some people could take more sweet, but this is my maximum. So this would be a 10 on the sweetness scale for me in terms of what I can handle. I really do like this fragrance and I like it in a sense because it is different than the other Givenchy gentlemen uh, line, the other flankers, which are all somewhat similar in their iris base. This scent is becoming harder and harder to find, and it, but if you can get it for a good price and you like gourmands, it's definitely something I would try, if you can try before you buy it, but I doubt you're going to be in a situation where you, where you will be able to sample it. I give this one two thumbs up. If you like this video, hit the like button, the subscribe button, notification bell. Any thoughts, experience, or questions you have on this scent, leave them down below and I will always get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.